You know what time it is Time to hang hey, out with Mr. Cool We're Mr. Kuba We're Mr. Kuba We're Mr. Kuba Get the latest cool From Mr. Kuba From Mr. Kuba From Mr. Kuba Hey, we're Mr. Kuba We're Mr. Kuba We're Mr. Kuba We're Mr. Kuba Get the latest cool From Mr. Kuba From Mr. Kuba Welcome to the Bit Scoop with Coop. I'm your host, Coop. Season 10 is still going strong, people. If you haven't, make sure you go to the website, thebitscoopwithcoop.com to catch episodes from season one all the way up to now. Big shout outs to everybody that's watching on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash thebitscoopwithcoop. Big shout outs to everybody that's watching on Instagram at bitscoopwithcoop. And big shout outs to everybody that's watching on YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash The Big Scoop with Coop. Okay, people, enough about me. Today's guest, she is a successful book author. She is a strong believer in Christ, and she has a book that's out that's called Many Voices, One Truth. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Tracy Terrace. Now, once again, Tracy's doing big things. Not only she's a book author, she's a licensed marriage and family therapist. So if you're in the state of California and you need help with anything, make sure you hit Tracy up. Once again, go to Amazon, get the book, Many Voices, One Truth. You want to make sure you read this book. Great read. All right, people, let's sit back and relax. Let's catch up with Tracy. Let's see what she's going on. She's going to talk about her career, this book, and much more. All right, people, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Tracy Terrace. Tracy Terrace, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> yes. How's your day so far? It's been great. You know, I uh, usually on Fridays, I work at the college and then come into my private practice and it's usually a pretty chill day. So yeah, and today was great. <laughs> that's great. That's great. I'm in North Carolina. So um, I don't think the weather knows what it wants to do. Now I think it wants to be cold. <laughs> so um, I hope the snow don't come in no time soon. But yeah. um, I miss the summer already. I definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Our weather's, our weather's doing the same thing. It doesn't know what it wants to do, whether it's fall or winter or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel you. I definitely feel you. Now, Tracy, like I was telling everyone before, you have done something very successful with this book, uh, Many Voices, One Truth. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but we want to talk about your beginning steps. Now, um, you are a successful author. You definitely are. So what inspired you to become an author? Well, I think I've always had a creative streak. When I was a child, I loved reading. Like I would spend my entire summers reading. And so, you know, like on my grandmother's porch or, or whatever. And so I had always planned to become an author, like creative writing. And there are a few uh, things that I have, a few uh, projects, nonfiction projects that I have in the works, but I decided to write a nonfiction book uh, because there's so many people that come into my office. I'm a, a marriage and family therapist. And one of the biggest things that I work with people on is their mind and their thoughts and how they're thinking about things. And so early on in my practice, I could see the toll that what a person believes is taking on their sense of self, all of their relationships, even their ability to be successful. And so I think in the back of my mind, um, pretty early on in, I had um, an intention of writing something, but the idea didn't come to me until like 2011. And I didn't start writing this book until 2017. Wow. Wow. So you're saying that the thought idea actually came years before the book was even out. Yes, it was during a crisis, a family crisis. One of my baby sisters had a stroke. She was in her late 30s. And it was just astounding, the fact that, you know, she had a stroke. Um, it was mostly stress related and and things like that. And, and now she's better. She's um, thinking differently and, and being differently in her in her life. But what the the idea came to me because of the beliefs that I was having about myself when I was there helping her. Like it was very stressful for me. Um, I had been told when I was little by my mom that I would die young. And at the time, I didn't realize that that memory was triggered. I thought I had dealt with that in therapy, but helping my sister at such a young age, 
it, I realized later in, in talking with a friend that that memory of fearing that I would die young had been re-triggered, even though I had kind of dealt with that in um, therapy and, you know, in pastoral counseling and other kinds of, you know, counseling sessions, it was still a little seed back there that got re-triggered when I went back to help her who almost, cause her stroke was pretty serious, who could have died, you know, in her late thirties. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I am so glad that your sister recovered from it. And I am also glad that you actually, you know, you found out there was something that was still triggering you in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, that kind of pushed you to get to this book. Um, that kind of goes into my next question I have for you. And you kind of answered it already. Also, what type of struggles did you go through to become a successful author that you are today? I would say I was the biggest struggle, like not disciplining my time or disciplining my time, planning to write, but letting this, that, and the other get in the way of that. Like, you know, I would have a writing, like when my writing time was um, during the day, suddenly I'd have to do laundry. Suddenly I'd have to play plan the meals for the whole week and just anything and everything getting in the way of the writing. And it really wasn't until I went on, um, well, there was two things that made me finish it. Like my sister's crisis and what I was thinking about myself mm -hmm. was, gave me the idea and the catalyst. But the thing that helped me to finish it was my teenage daughter, my youngest daughter, she started, you know, suffering with negative thoughts. And, and this kid is from, uh, a well-grounded family, like she's super supported. We speak into her life. We love her. She knows she's loved. And what I've found as a therapist, whether you come from a family that's, you know, relatively functional or very functional or completely dysfunctional, every person struggles with negative thoughts. And so watching her go through that and helping her through it, I knew that, you know, I had to get on the good foot and just really finish this book and stop dragging my feet. That was one thing. And then another thing that helped was I went to a writer's retreat uh, in Mendocino, California. And it was a week long retreat and a retreat in every sense of the word. It was like at a beach, not like the, the sessions were not on the, the hotel where I stayed. It was on the beach and the retreat was eight to two. So you had a lot of time in the morning or nine to two. You had a lot of time in the morning to be by yourself and then a lot of time in the afternoon and evening. And he gave us a lot of different practicals. And two of the practicals that I took with me from that retreat was to never be away from your writing project for more than three days, because it turns into three months and can easily turn into three years. And to give yourself a writing um, word count every day. So what I would do is I changed my writing time from just whenever I had time during the day, because I run a private practice. So a lot of times my writing times would be in between clients, mm -hmm. but then I wouldn't do that. Like if I was at home doing telehealth from my home office, I would find housework to do. And if I was here, then I'd find administrative things to do. So it really didn't work until I scheduled 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning for me to get up every morning and do those 1,000 words before my day began. And when I did that, that's when I was able to finish. <laughs> Whoa. Now, Tracy, that's dedication right there. I mean, you're getting up 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning to do a thousand words? That, yeah, whoa. yeah. The yeah. majority of America is dreaming <laughs> in the bed <laughs> around 4.35 in the morning. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, ladies and gentlemen, it's watching worldwide. If you're trying to become an author, you, you better take down these notes right here. You better grab these jewels that Tracy is throwing because you can't just say, I'm going to wake up whenever I want to and just write a paragraph and just go back to sleep or go shopping. You got to put 125 million percent dedication into your work. Yeah, you definitely exactly. Yeah. Yes. Now, Tracy, did you have any mentors to help you out throughout um, becoming a successful author? Yeah, the, the guys, he's not my mentor, but I've read a lot of his books. Um, he, he too is a psychotherapist and he's now mostly a coach for other creative people like writers and dancers and actors and stuff. And his name is Eric Mizell, M-A-I-S-E-L. And he has a lot of material out there to help you get from start to finish. Also my agent, uh, Sharon Elliott, she does a master class, and that helped me to finish as well because her master class takes you from idea 
to the end of your book proposal. And that kind of helped me to get more organized in my thinking. Her company is called Authorize Me. And if you're out there struggling, trying to get it together and get organized and get from you know page one to the end, taking a class like Sharon's will help you. Because what I learned in her class is that in the nonfiction arena, you don't even have to write a whole book. You just have to write the pr uh, book proposal with the first three chapters and shop that around. And you could be shopping around three or four book proposals, you know, and then you you would complete the one that that sells. But by the time I found Sharon, I was almost done with the the manuscript, but it still helped me to get, you know, organized and and things like that. Another person that I think is sort of a mentor of mine is my uh, cousin, Christy. She's been writing for years and just watching her complete projects was just inspirational. Like she'll complete something in three weeks because she'll put her nose to the grind and, and crank it out. Uh, and this is like fiction stuff like she's doing. And then my husband is a musician Okay. and I've watched him do, he did a whole album over COVID you know, like just the dedicate, just having creative people in my life and around me that are dedicated to their craft, that do not make excuses, help me to make fewer excuses. I don't want to say no excuses because I still find some because, you know, I'm a mom, I'm running a home, I'm running a business. So there's always excuses, but, you know, following different people and um, imitating them has helped me to make fewer excuses and as you know a creative. What? You know what, Tracy, it looks like with all these successful people around you, it is very hard for you to say you have writer's block. It, it, it yeah. seems like it's almost impossible because you have yeah. a push everywhere you look. That, yeah. wow, I got to give you your flowers now, Tracy. Congratulations once again Thank for you. what you're doing, man. Now, yeah. Tracy, let, let's talk about this book right here. Many Voices, mm -hmm. One Truth. Um, This book, I read a lot of this and this book, has some very great information, but I want you to tell everybody what this book is actually about, out of your words. Okay, so uh, Many Voices, One Truth is a book about belief and choosing who and what you are going to believe. Like many of us are bombarded every day of our lives with negative thoughts that come from our past, that come from the present, that comes from our view of ourselves. And so when I was growing up, we didn't have cable. So we only had three, well, four broadcast networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC. They even called themselves the big three. And then we also had PBS, which was the public broadcasting service or system, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so I take that idea and I uh, teach the reader about four major voices that are broadcasting in your own mind every day. And they are self- Satan, society, and savior. And so what I do is I teach the difference between these different voices and how you can tell if what's broadcasting to your mind is yourself based on some of your life experiences that are either positive or negative and how you tell the difference between that and the other three voices, what the voice of Christ sounds like, you know, who is the savior, what the voice of society. And the thing I talk about is that Self and society can broadcast both positive and, ne and negative messages, depending on what you're tuned into and depending on what you're taking into your mind at the time. But Satan and uh, Savior, they can only broadcast either positive or negative. Like God's voice will not broadcast negative uh, and Satan's voice will not broadcast you know, positive. The thing about Satan is he masquerades as uh, an angel of light but he's not. And so like learning how to, you know, what that feels like when you, you have that information coming in so that you can slow down, take stock and put into practice some of the practicals in the book. Many of the practicals are um, things that I use here in my private practice to help people change their cognitions and how they think and how they behave according to what they're thinking, along with prayer practices that I've learned over the course of, I guess, 20 years going to prayer retreats and taking time to cultivate the spirit side of myself and connect, you know, to the divine, you know? Mm -hmm. that, that's true. Mm -hmm. And Tracy, you know, a lot of people out here, they say, they can, they can say, hey, I go to church. You know, I've heard the word, 
But, you know, hearing the word and embedding in the word into you is two different things. Um, yeah. and I feel that a lot of people, they will hear a voice in their head and they may hear one positive word and think, oh, that's Christ. He's telling me it's okay if I go beat up this person because I didn't kill <laughs> the person. So I didn't break a yeah. commandment. So, you know, a lot of people need to, you know, read this book, also get into their Bible at the same time so they can learn themselves what's right for wrong, what voice is what. And I am so glad that you wrote this book because people need to know, you know, the truth, the one truth of what's going on. Yeah. You will hear many voices and you will hear it, like you said, from Satan, from society. You'll hear it from general people that think they know something, but they really don't. They're just going off of what they heard from other people say by flipping the channel saying, oh, I went to church because I turned to TNN um, yeah. or TBN, excuse me, um, on, and I heard a word from a pastor, but they're not so yeah. in. So I'm glad you yeah. said it now. Tracy, what, how can people get this book? Where can they buy it? If you go to Amazon um, and it's, and put in my name, uh, Tracy Terrace, T-R-A-C-Y-T-A-R-I-S, it'll come right up. You know, the name of the book is Many Voices, One Truth, but Amazon's algorithms are such that a lot of books that kind of have a similar type title or a similar type message <clears throat> will pop up. But if you want mine, put in my name and that one will be first. There'll be others there too, but that one will be first. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, watch worldwide. Make sure you go to Amazon, get the book, type in Tracy Terrace, make sure you buy this book. Do not go to Amazon right now because you're watching this interview. After the interview, go to Amazon, buy this book, make sure everyone in your family have this book. You want Tracy in your house. And this literally, you want Tracy in your house right here. So make sure you go get this book. Great Christmas present, birthday present, Thanksgiving present. Make sure you go get the book. Now, Tracy, now um, I want to actually talk about do you feel about people after they read the book? Do you feel like a lot of people will be guided in the right direction or their minds will be changed or knowledge after they read Many Voices, One Truth? That all depends on whether they apply what they read. Mm -hmm. Because I always tell my clients that uh, healing comes in seven stages. The first stage is, um, you know, awareness that you have a problem. The second stage is desire. You want to do something about the problem. The third stage is knowledge where you go out and get information about the problem. And so that might look like reading a book or an article. It might look like going to see a therapist or a pastoral counselor. It might look like looking up research on the internet. But at each of these stages, a person can get stuck. Like you can know that you have a problem, but not have any desire to do anything or desire to do something about the problem, but not put forward any effort to do anything. But once you get to knowledge, the more knowledge that you have and the more understanding you have, you will develop insight and insight shows you why you are making the choices that you're making. But until you get to number five, which is application, like you apply what it is you learn, then there's not really going to be any change. It's like knowledge just for the sake of knowledge is just information in your head that you're going to eventually forget. Mm -hmm. So you have the most important step in all of these uh, steps is the application. So if you get the book and you read it and you apply the exercises, what will happen is you'll move into stage six, which is wisdom and discernment. And wisdom says, now that I know what's going on with me and I have the tools to make the changes, I know what I need to do. And I know why I need to do these things. Mm -hmm. And discernment is more like, not only do I know what to do, but I know what is, or I can discern what is uh, good enough and what would be the better option and what would be the best option. Once you've done that for a while, you move into stage seven, which is peace. And when with peace, you're no longer actively applying. It's just the way that you live. You see the world in a different way. You're doing your life in a different way, you're responding in different ways, but you have to make sure that you're applying and keep applying. You know, in the, in the therapy field, we have this concept called a rush to wellness and a rush to wellness means like when the client or the patient starts to feel better, immediately they stop doing the treatment. 
like they might stop coming to therapy or if they're taking something like antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication, they feel better. So then they stop taking it. But it's like, there's not been enough change. Like with, with, with regards to medication, your brain chemistry has to balance out and level out. So you have to take it, you know, and that's between you and your psychiatrist. Like your psychiatrist is the one that would help you with that, you know? And so same thing when you're applying these things, like you have to develop, you know, more and more of a habit and a way of being, you know, people are often told that it takes 21 days to start a new habit. And it does, it takes 21 days to form a new habit, but then it takes an additional 21 days for that new habit to get entrenched in your neurological pathways. And then an additional 21 days for it to really become a behavior change. So a lot of people stop at the, the three week mark, mm -hmm. but then your brain is just going to go back to whatever it is you That's have cool. to train. So it takes a, you know, a little over two months to really, really make a change is what they've they've uh, learned in neuroplasticity research now. So let, let me ask you this, Tracy, on average, I know a lot of people have different mindsets. They have different situations that's going on with their life from step one to seven on the average. What would be the hardest step for the average person? Five. Five, Five is usually because the thing about one of the reasons I wrote this book the way I wrote it. Mm -hmm. is because there are many books out there that will tell you what's wrong and why it's wrong. And when you're reading that, you feel heard because it resonates. Now I have an understanding of what it is, but a lot of books don't really tell you what to do once you've figured out why things are the way they are, once you've figured out why you feel the way you feel and think the way you think, you know, so people will often find a book and even recommend books and say, oh, that's such a great book because they felt gotten and because they felt heard and the the stuff that, you know, they learned in there resonated with their experience, but then they're not realizing that, okay, now what do I do with this? So a lot, and some sometimes people go to therapy and that's the same thing. Like there's not really, you you have some understanding and you feel heard, but you're not really told you know, there's no exploration of what do I do with this information in order to make a change. So I would say application is the hardest. And then, but keeping, continue to apply so that you move into that wisdom and discernment so that you move into that eight, that uh, stage of peace where you're no longer trying to enact change. You have change. And this is now how you are as a person. Wow. Wow. So step five is basically the peak of the hill. That, yeah. That's when you get past that, it's smooth. I'm not going to say smooth selling because you got to keep applying what you have, mm -hmm. but you can yeah. have more of a relaxation coming down. Yeah. Okay, I yes. like that. I definitely like mm -hmm. that. Once again, people, if you know anyone that's going through any type of trouble in their life, once again, get this book. You want to make sure you do have that one truth. Go to Amazon, get the book. Make sure you do it. Now, Tracy, are there any other projects that you're working on right now that you would like the world to know about? Well, um, I'm working on a book that um, it's sort of a follow up to this book, like what you do once you are tuned in to the one truth, once you are tuned into the Savior's voice, like how do you apply that and walk in step with Christ in your day to day life, in your day to day living, breathing, working, you know, that's that's the next step uh, and that's the next project. Wow. Make sure you keep up with Tracy. You want to make sure you know when this book come out, you want to get the collection that Tracy is doing right now. This is not just to collect the collect, um to collect dust. You want to read these books, <laughs> apply, apply, apply. I'm going to say step five, step five, step five. Make sure you do it. <laughs> you don't want to mess up on this. Go on and get it for whoever you know that needs these books. Now, Tracy, what is the best way for everyone to follow you on social media so they can keep up with you for what you're doing? Okay, so I uh, have two Instagram accounts and one is for my private practice and it's at Healing the Mind and Spirit. And also my website is HealingTheMindAndSpirit.com. And if you uh, are listening and you live in California, we have a group of therapists here. If you feel like you wanna come in and work on something, it may be with me, but it may be with one of our other therapists. We offer telehealth services. So anywhere in California and then in-person services, if you are in the Southern California, Los Angeles area. 
on Instagram. Also, I'm at Tracy Terrace, T-R-A-C-Y-T-A-R-I-S. And also on those names um, on Twitter and LinkedIn. And I do have a website, tracyterrace.com. If you subscribe to my website, not my website, my email subscription list, mm -hmm. you will get a free um, uh, mindfulness ebook that I wrote. It's called Mindful Meditations, and it has exercises to help you calm down, and, and it's in, in ebook form, so you can just download it right away and start applying some of the practicals there as well. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, a free book? <laughs> you better go put your email address in there. Get it. Everyone needs this stressful times these days. So much is going on in this world. You do want this. You want to make sure you do this. Now, Tracy, are you all helping people that's outside of California also? Or are you all willing to? Uh, well, I am in the process of looking into like coaching credentials mm -hmm. so that I can um, kind of expand because I do get a lot of calls from people in other states. And I always have to tell them that I'm just licensed for therapy in California, but with uh, life coaching, it's a little bit more flexible. And so, you know, once I get that going and I get certified in that, I'll put that on my website. It'll be, it'll be showing that, okay, life coaching services for, you know, the rest of the continental United States. So <laughs> nice, nice. So meanwhile, everybody, if you're not in California, if you want help from Tracy, there it is. I can't show this enough. <laughs> Make sure you get the book. Now, Tracy, what advice would you give any male or female that wants to become a successful author? Um, like find, like some of the questions that you asked me were like very good with regards to finding a mentor, you know, figuring out what are your barriers. Like for me, my mentors were um, this psychotherapist that I, you know, followed uh, and other creative people around me. And the barrier for me was me you know, like not disciplining my time. So figure out what is it that stops you? Is it excuses? Is it too much of a busy schedule? Like, are there some things in your schedule that you can eliminate or delegate so that you do have uh, time to write? I once took a course at UCLA Extension and it was a writer's course. And I believe the guy said, like, if you write, and this is true, like mm -hmm. commit to a half hour a day, mm -hmm. you know, that's like two pages you know, by the end of three or four months, you will have the first draft of a book. If you're writing two pages a day, every day for three or four months, you'll have the first draft of a book. And that's just a half hour, you know? Jeez. I did not uh, know it could go that quick though. That That's crazy. It does. Just a it half can. hour. And, and that's, that's the crazy thing. It's like, People look at a book and think of it as such a daunting task. And it would be daunting if you just sat down and did it all day, every day. But if you're thinking of it from the standpoint, I've, I'm going to write a little bit or for a short time, you know, each day mm -hmm. over the course of time, you'll have accumulated a first draft. Yeah. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, going to get your computer. If you're old school, old school, old school, get your typewriter. Get your pen, get your paper. I have one of those. <laughs> See, there you go. Going to start doing it. If it's in your mind, going to start typing it out. I guarantee something's going to come out of this. I guarantee it. Yeah. Now, Tracy, this is the last segment of the show. It's called Take the Floor. So you have up to two minutes to say whatever you want. No questions asked. Tracy Terrace, take the floor. Okay, so what I want to say to your listeners is that you know, much of my book talks about belief and there is freedom in belief. We as a human being, we get to choose what it is we're going to think about and what it is we're going to believe. Most people think that they are at the mercy of their thoughts, but they're, you're not at the mercy of your thoughts. If you can sit down and think about what you're thinking about, like really pay attention to what's going through your mind. Like we have so many thoughts that are flowing in and out of our minds on a daily basis that we can feel like we're at the mercy of them and they're just running rampant. But simple tools like think picturing a stop sign and telling you tell that thought to stop because you are the master of your mind. Your mind is not the master of you. You know, sometimes people allow their minds to master them, but you can get that mastery back because, you know, it's your soul. You know, like the mind and the soul in psychology, the mind and the soul are synonymous. Like in the Bible, 
it differentiates between soul and spirit. Most people think of their soul and their spirit as the same thing, but the Bible differentiates between that, you know, and psychology, like if you were to look up uh, psychology on Google, nowadays you would find the study of the mind, the study of human behavior and relationships and things like that. But really it's the study of the soul. Psyche means soul. And so you're taking command of that by being aware of what it is you're thinking and calming yourself. Like cultivating the side of your spirit takes prayer. It takes sitting still. Like it takes time in the word. It takes exercise. It takes good sleep. Like we are whole human beings. And so we have to pay attention to all of the aspects of ourselves so that we can be on top of things. Like there's so many people that's, you know, they'll say, I don't know why I did that. Or I don't know why I said that. Well, you said it because it's inside of you. So get to know what's inside of you and then choose to put other things in there. Like, don't be at the mercy of your thoughts. You know, you are free and you can be free. You just have to take command of your thoughts and that takes practice. Ooh, now that was deep. That was deep, Tracy. That's what I'm talking about. Take out the negative people, put the positive, take control of your thoughts. Don't let the thoughts take control of you. Make sure you don't yeah. do that. Once again, people, make sure you follow Tracy Terrace on, um, go to her website. Make sure you follow her on Instagram. Go to Amazon. I can't say it enough. Get the book, people. Get the book. You want to make sure you do it. Now, Tracy, I would love to have you back on in the future. I would love to. Come on. Thank you. Yeah. You are so welcome. All right, everybody. Make sure you keep up with the Bit Scoop with Coop. The next um, episode of the Bit Scoop with Coop, my next guest is... You know, I don't announce my next guest. You got to make sure you keep up on social media. Follow me. You'll know real soon. Until the next time, people, on the Bit Scoop with Coop. Peace.